so my name is Thomas. I came from Portugal from a small uh, town called Caldas da Rainha and I live in Lisbon for 15 years. I bought my first turntable when I was 16, my first Technics turntable and a really crappy mixer. And in the beginning, um, my passion was always uh, hip hop, urban music, uh, electronic, drum and bass, from Prodigy to Goldie to Ronnie Size to Wed Rush. Uh, to the old school OGs. The thing that moved me to, to start scratching was uh, Cubert, D Styles, Mix Master Mike, the DJ from Beastie Boys. So that was my goal, uh, doing just, you know, uh, being like a hardcore scratch DJ. But then I started having fun mixing, and uh, before that, I, I also did beats for uh, made beats for my friends, my rapper friends. I started trying to do like more electronic stuff, more bangers. Um, and uh, then, like I did my uh, my first album in 2007, it was like a mix between hip hop, jazz, and scratch. It was called uh, Turntable Food, and uh, I started like uh, playing more in Portugal. Focus also on the battle DJs. I entered in DMC in ITF. Then ITF moved to IDA, the name, um, and um, I focused on that because I really wanted to, you know, to, to push forward, to develop my skills, to grow up and to show uh, what we can do uh, with the turntable as an instrument. One of the highlights of my career uh, was um, started to focus more on battles with my my friend Stereosaur. So we we found the we we did the crew beat bombers, and uh, we went to Poland to, to ITF, to IDA, uh, International International DJ Association, and we won the, the um, world finals in 2011 and 2016. And then uh, that helped us a lot, um, reaching like people like these styles. We did a track with these styles with Kentaro, DJ Kentaro from Japan, from Ninja Tune. And um, after that, we started to, you know, to play like more festivals, uh, bigger clubs. That was uh, like a, a big thing for us. For, for my family, like the family, the, the music thing is like a surprise because we don't have anyone uh, before before me and Holly connected to music. But I, I had like um, piano lessons when, when I, I was like 12, but at the time I, I preferred playing video games and, <laughs> and uh, playing soccer with my, with my friends. Uh, but it helped me a lot to learn about, you know, harmonies, notes, chords. Holly was always into skates and uh, me, I, I was uh, more into like BMX, downhill, dirt jumping. But it was funny because our cultures were always like kind of similar. The, the music that we listened to was always similar, like from hip hop to drum and bass to electronic. So it was not the thing like as older brother, I never uh, said to him like, oh, you, you have to, you know, produce like this or like that. It was like really uh, a surprise to produce uh, something similar and to now to release like on the same labels, you know. <laughs> He's a huge influence to me and my friends and everyone around. And uh, yeah, uh, we are always like really proud of him. Yeah. Uh, I started doing beats before scratching. Now, E equipment is more affordable, but 15 years ago it was really complicated to buy like a, a Technics turntable and a, a proper mixer. I had a really crappy computer at the time, so I, I downloaded some software. I think the first one was EJ, like is the worst uh, software uh, ever. And then after that was um, Fruity Loops, and I really had fun with, with Fruity Loops for a while. Beats, I began producing first but it uh, was only hip-hop, rap beats, really basic, old-school stuff. Some years uh, after that, I, um, I bought like Ableton Live, an MPC, a uh, proper synthesizer, a keyboard, workstation, sound card. With that equipment, my, my skills uh, were like really different from the beginning, and uh, I started doing more, you know, 
more releases and album and all that stuff, yeah. Maybe my thing is, uh, I love scratching, doing like double time, uh, power combos, like mixing. There's a technique really, really simple. It's, it's called uh, sharp, but with flares. So we can do like sharp with flares, with crabs. Crabs is like, you use all four fingers to um, to split the sound in, in four times, like and because you do this with the hands, uh, the, the technique is called crab. And so I like to mix um, different techniques with really fast and sharp sounds. And I, I try to, to do like, my thing I think is the, the flow because I, I really like to, to scratch on hip hop, but maybe my favorite tempo to scratch is like the drum and bass tempo and the half time and the, even like uh, juke and um, you know, like footwork beats. If I have a signature or a trademark, I think it's, uh, yeah, scratching, uh, scratching in different kind of BPMs, far from the hip hop background that I had, and uh, may, maybe yeah, mix like different um, power combos and different techniques to do like really crazy flows and different kinds of musicality, yeah. So I, I always had the dream to produce bass music, but for me, um, the skill to produce bass music, uh, even if it's breakbeats, uh, dubstep, drum and bass, is really different from hip hop. Because you can do like, I love hip hop, it's one of my main loves, passions, but um, you can do like a, a really nice beat, hip hop beat in, let's say, half an hour. But it's, it's kind of impossible to, um, to finish like um, a drum and bass beat in half an hour, start and finish, because the skill that that you you had to put in the you know producing, mixing, mastering is totally different from from hip hop. So I really needed to you know to to improve my skills, to improve my my home studio. Uh, so I, I spent a lot lots of time. Like even even in the lockdown, I subscribed uh, to lots of Patreon. I learned a lot. Uh, from watching like other people producing like videos, tutorials, all that stuff. I do hip hop beats since I'm I was like 15, 16, but bass music um, maybe just like eight years ago, and uh, I started releasing stuff on international labels since 2016. Uh, my first like proper um, bass music release was on Saturate was like a highlight for me because Satirite was like one, one of my favorite labels at the time and still is. You had like on the catalog like Eproom, G Jones, Sapiao, uh, lots of um, uh, underground legends and uh, with that release um, like DJ Shadow uh, played some tracks of that, uh, that EP that I released with them. So for me it was kind of validation and also an uh, inspiration to do more of that. Like DJ Shadow is one of my uh, uh, favorite DJs. So having him playing my, my stuff was like, okay, maybe I'm in the, in the right path and let's do more of this. So the track with, with Kentaro, and that's another example of, of like uh, one of my main inspirations and um, a guy from Ninja Tune with such a uh, you know, story on behind the turntables. And also, I, I love the, um, the Japan culture. So um, we did a, a track some months ago with some Japanese samples, like a really chill trap, 140 track. Then his manager s sent to a publisher and the uh, EA Games picked the, our track to a game that uh, is going to be released next year. They battle for territory. They clash for prey. That's one of the things that I love in the music industry, the, the, col the collaboration side of it. You can do like a track with uh, other people from around the globe and uh, you never know uh, where that track can, can uh, be like after some months or after some years, you know. Like I can do another example. The, the one of the tracks that I released on um, on Slow Roast, the DJ Craze label, um, is called Move Fast, and we released like in 2019, I think, 
and people still plays it, like Noisio plays it, Bunchin, and people like that. And uh, it's crazy because the track is kind of like three, uh, almost four years old, and uh, it still still have a life, you know. Uh, so so yeah, it's, it's like the the track that I did with Kentaro. We did some while ago, and now EA Games uh, picked it and uh, put it on. Uh, on his new new game, so we are really happy with it. Yeah. We don't have like um, a really strong club scene. We have like really few clubs that that support, and uh, you go there and you you can listen to bass music often. But we have plenty of really good producers. That's one of the things that I like the most of on my country. The production level is insane. You, you have like Bass Brothers, you have Frags, you have uh, the Surveillance people, you have Holly. You had uh, one of my, our best friends, Hazat. He, uh, he released on, um, on uh, Alex Perez label, on labels around the world, like he was the halftime king. I think, I wish in the future that can translate in a, a stronger club scene and more clubs and more parties and more promoters. But right now, uh, we don't have like um, uh, bass music parties every week. We have like maybe once or twice uh, a month. Talking about producers, we, we, all have, we, we already have plenty of them and doing really well. So that, that makes me really happy. Yeah. So the, the idea behind the track No It's Me that I, I'm going to release on, uh, on studio was uh, my, you know, exploring, st I'm still expo exploring the halftime genre and uh, the kind of signature that, that I did on my album on Vision, the intro. I'm trying to do like intro part two stuff, you know, because it, it's, it's still um, a format and a genre that I, I still have fun um, exploring like a tempo that I love, like 87, 86 BPM, really strong beats, some hip hop vocals, lots of bass layers. And um, I, I love doing a, a thing like you can listen to the track many times and you notice like different layers every time you, you listen to the track. Sometimes it can be like kind of too much stuff going on, but I really like that. Of course, sometimes I, I also have fun like doing more minimal stuff, but uh, when you have like lots of layers, I think even like in one year or two years, you're gonna listen to the track and you have, you're gonna notice some other details. So for me, it's, it's something that I really admire in other producers and I, I try to do that as well in my work. So yeah, the concept is just, you know, uh, I wanted to do another banger <laughs> and something that I, I can skate or I can ride my bike and having that kind of energy, you know, and uh, be hyped about that. And yeah, I can play that as, as well. It's like a really nice DJ tool too. So for me and other producers, I also s saw some people playing it and um, the crowd reaction is, is uh, so far has been really nice. So I'm really happy with it and I hope people enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> My studio is like a, a mix between analog stuff, VSTs and plugins. So I try to sample. It's like what I did when I just did hip hop, uh, hip hop beats. So I try to to sample my analog uh, synthesizers. I have a Moog. I have a Prophet. I have um, one of my last um, synthesizers that I bought is a Waldorf uh, Iridium. It's a really nice machine. So I try to do like a jam session, just doing crazy beats. I also um, pass the synthesizers through some distortion pedals, some guitar pedals, try to do like some experimental stuff. Uh, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes you, you have like really nice uh, surprises. Also, uh, I do beats, I still do beats with my MPC. I have a MPC 2000 XL, like the old school one. Sometimes I also do like 90% of the stuff inside Ableton Live. 
So yeah, it's a mix between the analog world and the digital world. Uh, it's something that I, I really like to explore. Sometimes I, I start with, um, with uh, my vintage synthesizers or some old vintage uh, keyboards. And then I try to layer with uh, Serum or Massive or other uh, VST plugins that I have on Ableton Live. And Ableton is my, my favorite uh, game. <laughs> I, I love Ableton. I, I produced there for more than 10 years. Something I, I love to do is mix both worlds. Uh, I use also um, uh, Universal Audio plugins. Uh, it helps a lot in the final stage of mixing, mastering. I try to do all by my own um, in the last years. I, I learned a lot from, from uh, one of my best friends that is a, a proper sound engineer in, in Portugal. He passed me like that kind of knowledge. So nowadays uh, I try to do everything, the production side of the track, mix and mastering. I also try to um, test the tracks on the club. For me, like being happy with the track is trying to play it live and see the, the live reactions of people. And if the, the sub, uh, the sound, the drums sound tight in the club. And uh, this track sounds really well, so <laughs> I'm happy with it. Yeah. So this is DJ Ride for Studio. I hope you like my track. And uh, yeah, see you around. Peace.